Hey there, so I'm going to be starting a web series uh, using TypeScript, React, Redux, JavaScript, essentially, uh, to build a financial calculator to help in calculating general financial practices regarding buying and selling stocks. Um, the reason I want to do this is because I want to obviously keep better, getting better at coding, but also uh, when evaluating uh, the total risk, expo risk exposure I have uh, with buy certain shares and figuring out when I want to sell them in the future takes a lot of mental math and keeping track of uh, all the scenarios and possibilities is not easy even with like the, the stack of paper that I have beside my table. So I figured if I make a calculator then I'll be less likely to make mistakes and I'll just be a better trader and why not just get better at programming while I do it. So uh, here's a really simple example of let's say what the first thing this calculator should do. Let's say I want to buy a thousand shares at five dollars. That'll come out to about five thousand dollars. Then I think I can sell these shares somewhere for around five point five dollars per share. So one thousand times five point five comes out to fifty five hundred. Uh, and kind of what happens there from here, from the time I purchase them to the time I sell them? Uh, well, the difference of the sell price and the purchase price is my total gain. This could also be a loss, of course, if my uh, sell price is lower, but in this case, my uh, gain that I'm hoping for is about $500 uh, in the absolute sense. Uh, relative gain would be, let's see, we haven't calculated that yet, would be 5.5, the price I sold at, divided by 5, the price I bought at, 10%. Uh, so that is a 10% gain. And of course, these could get much trickier with, let's say, uh, we have a transaction cost, so you would subtract the transaction costs. Uh, if you're leveraging, there would be other multiples that apply uh, from time of purchase to time of sale, such as interest rates. Interest rates, here we go. We can throw in also something like capital gains, taxes. So uh, these usually get applied on the capital gains and these usually apply to like your total gain where half of that in this case 250 is taxed at your marginal income whatever that may be and so you can kind of guess that even if it's a decent trade if the capital gains are going to be really high in your trade then maybe you don't want to do it because you're actually not going to profit when you take into account a lot of other things that are kind of happening in your life let's do it so uh, here we have just a folder for the video series. It's empty. There's nothing there. The repo is TypeScript React Starter by Microsoft. Um, so I've already installed the Create React app. So now we're going to create a new project called My App. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stick to My App. I guess I could call it Calculator. Is it going to execute if I paste? Nope. Great. So we go to the left. Let's call it financial calculator. Boom. Now if we, oh, it's installing. All right, let's give it a little bit of time. So what does this project give us? It's gonna build an app with this folder structure. You can ignore node modules, public, blah, 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 blah. And then running the project is as simple as running npm start. Exciting. Dependencies. There we go. Yarn start. Oh, not even npm run start. Now it's just yarn start. All right. Let's. Nope. I don't have yarn. Well, we actually have to install first. Oh. Right, we want to enter the financial. So we created a folder, we want to enter that folder. And now we have the actual application. Uh, file, open, uh, documents, software. Let's see, web series should be here somewhere. I am blind. Yeah. There we go. Great. So now we have the source files. We can see app.tsx has a simple, simple component. 
with a few basic things, just like the standard React app. You want to install. This is the wrong file. Okay. Oh, that is the right file. Great. So now we're actually installing the dependencies for this project, and then we'll get started. Got Uglify in here. Failed to download node gip. That should be fine. Great. npm start. This should open up the application. Boom. To get started, edit source slash app.tsx and save to reload. Great. And I think we already have that open. So instead of welcome to React, which is up here, let's say this is now our financial calculator. Calculator. Great, and you're reloaded. Uh, source. So we don't really have any folder structure here. Let's create a folder for our uh, components and then in there let's create another folder for uh, our purchase calculator let's and now in there index.tsx so what we want this component to do is it's going to calculate the total purchasing price that we were talking about earlier where if we bought a thousand shares at $5.5, that would come out to a total cost. Baby steps, baby steps. So, import star as, there we go. Just use it. We don't have to import the app. We've got React. Just probably highlight it because it's unused, correct? Export default class. We call this the purchase calculator and it's going to extend the react pure component which does a shallow compare on the components and it's also going to take some props and then render as a function uh, I'm going to assume this component is not going to be a pure component because sooner or later we will need to connect to the store so that's why we're just creating a class right away Let's export it down here since it might also need to like as connect to the store, so we'll have to do a re import Redux. But we're gonna start off simple, and we're just gonna use local state until we find a need that it should be refactored. Uh, let's just do hello world there, and interface props. We're not really taking any props yet. It correctly extends base class per component based on props and empty object. So you should have an empty state as well. Interface state. No, that's not the problem. Render is incompatible. Class purchase calculator incorrectly extends base class pure component. Oh, yeah, we say React. What's the issue? Oh, do we have to do import React? No, no. Oh, type void is not, yeah, okay. Return, we weren't actually returning in the render function. Cool, thank you, React, I mean, TypeScript. So we have a really basic component, and now we want to import it. So I'm going to click a hotkey that, as you can see, copies the file location relative to the project. I'm going to go back into the app. 
This one is yeah, I'm gonna import import the purchase calculator from here and we don't need the file extension. Um, it's not able to find it for some reason. It cannot find source components purchase calculator index. We don't actually need to write out index, I think. Maybe we do. Let's just keep that just in case. So it's declared but never read. That's fine. Uh, ultimately, we are just going to put it here. So I'll just get rid of that underline. Can I find module? It should. It's right there. Hmm. What could this be? Because I think so. I just tested this project earlier, and it used to work. Oh, so right, the file didn't exist when we originally started the web server, which means that now the web server does not have a pointer to the file, and it doesn't actually exist for it. So we have to actually kill the server, rerun it. And now it should work. No, I lied. Doesn't work. Even if we refresh. It's kind of getting dark. I'm going to turn on the light. Be right back. OK, so at this point, for some reason, my audio died, uh, which means there's no audio for the rest of the video. This is a second take, audio-wise. I'm going to speed up the video for the remaining part at, I think, 5x, and just kind of talk over what I was thinking, what I was trying to do, what I was trying to explain as we did it. So here we go. I, this file is not being imported. Um, I just had to Google something, but then I realized sooner or later that source, source is the issue. Uh, we're not actually inside, we're already inside source, so we shouldn't have source inside the file path. So then that's our Eureka moment, it goes away, great. And we have hello world in the front page. So we initialize the state with the share quantity, share price, and subtotal. They should all be numbers. We get the constructor, it initializes the state for all these things. And we start making the inputs because we're going to have to change these things. Uh, we name them. We want to set their values. We want these guys to be controlled components. And we do that for all three. And then we're going to create a single dynamic handle on change function to actually handle the changes, which takes an event E. I didn't feel like setting the event type, so I just set any. Initializing the name, the value, passing on the handle on change, which will use the name to actually set the share quantity, share price, subtotal, etc. And now I start explaining about how there's a relationship between share quantity being equal to share price, uh, subtotal divided by share price, and there's another relationship for the other three inputs that we're tracking. And I'm trying to think of a way to kind of describe that relationship. So that's me just writing it out. New share quantity is share price times subtotal and decided to do each case separately because they're kind of nuanced. Uh, we start off with the name as share quantity, uh, but note that the current values are from the current state. They're not using name or value. So the object that assign overwrites the this.state's value at the name, and now one of them will be updated to have the newest manually inputted value. We initialize the state, and now we assign it some stuff. In the case that it's share quantity, we've already manually entered it, so it has no formula. We know exactly where we want it to be. So we just have to calculate share price and subtotal. In the case of where we're already inputting the share quantity, so we write that out and we notice that uh, share price depends on subtotal, and subtotal depends on share price. And that's impossible to solve, and uh, we pretty much have to make one of them fixed. We have to assume that in this case, one of them should not be dynamically calculated. 
and we, I just kind of randomly pick one uh, for now. Later, we can change that. So there, share price is now fixed, and subtotal can accurately be calculated based on share price and quantity. And we do the same thing for the other uh, three possible name values. We pick a certain value to be fixed. Uh, in the second case, it's also share price. In the third case, it's also share price. And then there's some complaints about state not being assigned. Um, so we kind of initialize it at the very top. And uh, what happens next? We notice that share quantity and share price are very similar. The if statements are actually identical. There's no difference. So we might as well just have a single if that has both of those cases. Erase it. There you go. We check. It works. Um, it don't really have time to explain that it works at this rate, but just trust. But it looked ugly, and we want to give them labels. So let's throw in some labels. And when we look back, it's better, but the labels should be with each input. There we go. Now we want to make three rows where each one of those inputs has its own dedicated row. So we're going to need a style sheet for that. We define the style sheet, and we create the container. We give a make sure the style sheet imported correctly. Uh, give it a few random styles. They worked. And now we think we're going to need, I think I'm going to need label and input. Ultimately, I don't actually use those. But they're all going to be shared because they're all rows. So I'm trying to think of a decent way to call them. We go with row data. Uh, and row data applies to all of them. Where each row has two columns. And those are the shared styles that all those inputs have. Styling the container a bit. Uh, styling the rows. Giving them some margins, some padding. Calculating the width based on the margins. Uh, they're still not centered, and that's because they're not displayed in line block. They're centered, but the text line isn't there. Now it's on the left. Um, so now we have vertical margins not being applied. Not really sure why. I'll look into it, and that's because I typoed instead of pixel, I just wrote X. Uh, playing with the uh, colors a bit, making them a little less contrasty, uh, so they, I don't know, they look better. Uh, just minor details, making it look a little softer. Uh, the inputs are still working. They're calculating dynamically the subtotal if either the share quantity or the share price change, or if the subtotal changes, then it calculates the share quantity, noticing that the decimals aren't being cut off, so we're going to have to do rounding in the future. Uh, and for now, uh, just giving it a label uh, because we want to know that this is the purchase block because next we're going to be doing the sales block. And we're erasing the styles. H3, we realize, shouldn't be in the purchase block. It's actually a shared style. It's going to apply to all blocks. So we move it to the app.css file. Uh, and we're happy, and now we're kind of planning ahead. Uh, sale will go on the right, and then maybe a summary of the difference from the time we purchase the shares to the time we sell the shares uh, will go beneath them. The sell calculator will be almost identical to the uh, purchase calculator for now, so copying it, putting a sell calculator into the components folder works out. We're refactoring the purchase container to actually be just a calculator container for all calculators, and the row data as well applies to all calculators, so we actually remove the purchase calculator style sheet, and it's now shared in the app.css. But the cell is not showing, that's because I actually never imported it at the app level. There it goes. Uh, but now they're on top of each other, that's not what we wanted. We want them to be beside each other, so let's figure that one out. Um, realize display line block is working, but now they don't have a margin between them. When I remove the margin, they're still centered, which throws me off, because I'm not really sure why they're centered. Thinking about it, and I realize it's text aligned because we made them display inline block. Now they take inline element styles, which is text line centered. So I'm trying to figure out how can I center them and give them the margin. Uh, brain farting. I think about. I consider flexbox. I consider other things I'm doing, but before I go too deep into like other variations, take a sip of water. I'm gonna refresh the screen, start from scratch, and display inline block. And I realize. I can just set the margin to 8 pixels, and they're centered, and I don't really have to refactor anything. Sweet. Moving on to the next part. Uh, let's kind of start, first confirm that the cell calculator is working. The purchase calculator is working. And now the, what we need to know is the difference from the purchase price to the sell price. And that'll be, I guess, for the next episode, uh, where we're going to be creating uh, reducers, action creatives, using actions, connecting our two components to calculate the difference between the purchase and the sell. And hopefully my microphone won't cut out next time. So, yeah. That's a wrap.